awesome guest panel. My guest this time is a 90s legend and a truly one-of-a-kind animator. Um, you may know him uh, in works such as Eek the Cat and one of my favorites uh, growing up on what a cartoon, Yuck, uh, Yucky Duck. Oh, my God. <laughs> I absolutely am a huge fan, and he's one of those rare, like you know, rare like animators that actually does the voice of the character and, and animates the show too. My guest at this time is Mr. Bill Cop. Bill, hello, hello everybody. <laughs> it's swell to be here. Kumbaya! It's a great to have you here, sir. <laughs> uh, my, my first question I have for you, uh, Bill, is um, you know, how did you get like like you, you've been uh, an animator or like you know like you know, like history, like a legendary actor in the 90s. Uh, what what made you get into animating? Well, uh, it was at the California Institute of the Arts where I went to school. And uh, I was a painter, actually. And then I met Savage and a bunch of other crazy animators like Gary Trousdale and Rob Minkoff and Kelly Asbury, Chris Sanders, uh, Peter Chung, the list goes on. And they were having way more fun than us painters were. So I switched my major into animation there. And that's how I got into it. And Savage and I were very close. So that you know, led to Better Off Dead, One Crazy Summer, and then eventually Eat the Cat. Awesome. And that, that was my next question, too. Like, what was the inspiration behind Eek the Cat? Eek? Uh, Savage had a cat whose, whose name was Eek, <laughs> I believe. And uh, he he, um, he was the cutest little thing, but he got he got um, a hawk swooped down and took him away one day, and we never saw him again. And that was the genesis of the character. It was like just really we, we wanted to make a character that was like no matter what happened to him, he was always gonna be okay, you know. But that was that was the the inspiration. Is horrifying, yeah. You say that like with Eek the Cat though, he has so many, you know, positive qualities. He likes he's the type of person that wants to put others before himself. Would you say he's like definitely someone with a heart of gold, right? Oh, absolutely. Yes, yes. It's it's a uh, it's what you call pathos, like, you know, in the face of all sorts of adversarial things that are gonna happen to this guy, he never gives a it never hurts to help. You know, I mean help. that's that's his thing, so you know that yes, he's a very positive character, and that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to create a guy that was just like, no matter what happened, no matter how bad, he just never gave up. What was it like working on Fox Kids? It was great. It was it was one of the best time, times of my life. I mean, Margaret Lesh was there. She was she was our boss, so to speak, and uh, we just kind of went crazy there. And that was the, you know, she did Eek, and she. Let us do Toonsylvania and um, Mad Jack the Pirate. And it was a good, uh, it was just a really creative place to be. It was wonderful. Yeah. Very, fun. very cool. And you're one of those rare, like, animators that, that you see their names on everything. You were on Fox Kids. You were also on Cartoon Network, like I mentioned earlier, What a Cartoon with you know, Yucky Duck. Can you tell me more about, like, what led to Yucky Duck, like, the origins of it? Sure. Well, that was my friendship with Pat Ventura who I was great friends with at, at Cal Arts. And uh, he and I were just, we always got along really well. And I thought he was oh, he's just a great, I mean, he, oh, he's obviously a very expressionist, car, very expressionistic cartoonist. And uh, we, um, we were just really good friends. And then we did, uh, I think we did that stuff. And he just wanted me to do the voice because we, we hung out, we were friends. But then we also did that Tales from the Crypt episode together. Um, the, the third pig, the final episode of the HBO uh, Tales of the Crypt. So, um, but Pat, that was just one of those things Pat talked me into doing. He's like, come on and do the voice, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I love Pat I, and I, I miss his work. I don't know what he's doing these days. I still remember as a kid watching Yucky uh, Duck in short orders. I love that short where he's trying everything he could to cut that steak. He used a chainsaw. He used a butcher knife. He used a sharp knife. He used a float torch. It was well, so that, funny. That was Pat. Pat was a great uh, fan of silent comedy. So, he, But he just, you, you know, with, with, it, within a cartoon, I mean, good gag cartoons are based in silent comedy. So you just pump up the action and get all crazy and that Pat was an expert at that. And and that that's why that Tales from the Crypt episode works so well. That's why I brought him in because I needed his he has that certain punch, you know. I mean he's an artist, you know. Yeah, 
Fair point. Like, have you ever met people from like like I mean, you had you had to because Eat the Cat was W uh, Fox Kids, and the the companies that produced it, I believe, were like Nova Novana. Did I say that correctly? That's right. Yeah, Novana in Toronto. Yeah, and 20th Century Fox, right? Well, it was Fox Kids. Um, you know, I, I I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know. The, I'm not a businessman, so I don't really know the what the relationship was, but. You know the Fox Network started, um, you know, and, and Savage was involved in the beginnings of that too, and um, so I'm not sure how that works with 20th Century Fox, but yeah, Novana was the key animation house that we used for Eek and the Tales from the Crypt episode. Also, they were instrumental in making that happen. Topher Taylor. Talk, talk more about the Tales of the Crypt episodes, because I'm curious to like get your like opinion. Like, what was your favorite episode of Tales of the Crypt that you've done? Well, uh, Tales of the Crypt. Yes. Well, my episode was my favorite. <laughs> well, it, this is for HBO, and it was the only animated one that they ever did. And it was the last episode of the whole 13, or however many years that series went on. But, uh, I mean, I, I look back at the old comic books, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of stories. I, I don't really have a particular favorite, uh, but I really thought that we did a great job on ours. <laughs> Very cool. Like, but like, how, how did you get like, um, like the, um, with Cartoon Network though, with short orders with Yucky Duck, like, how did that come about? Like, you know, meet the meeting with, uh, the people at Cartoon Network. Well, you know, that was Pat's vehicle. That was Pat's project. So he, he just brought me into it. You know, he, he's just like, I need a crazy voice. I didn't do any artwork on that. I was just there as a voice. So I really had nothing to deal with, you know, that being set up. That was all Pat Ventura. Oh, okay. Yeah. And and, and uh, Fred Seberg, right? Fred Seberg, yes. Um, his work. I think his company is called Federator, right? Federator? Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, but, but yeah, the Yucky Duck stuff, that was all Pat Ventura, man. I was just there for the voice. I had nothing to do with story or anything. I was just along for the ride. But you did have, you know, a story like you were a writer and creator for Toonsylvania, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. What were your memories of working on Toonsylvania? That was a very difficult project at first because they had so much material and uh, we had to really sort through. They'd been working on it for a couple of years before Jeff DeGranis and I came in. And so we had to sort through a lot of great material, but we had to like cut it, cut it into this thing. That's why, you know, that, that is sort of in pieces, you know, like you have the, you have the, the Melissa Street stuff, you have, the, um, the Frankenstein stories with Igor, uh, the B-movie stuff, which I love, Earth versus Everything, great. Um, so we were just kind of, that's how that show sort of got cobbled together. We just took all these pieces and kind of like, you know, built it into the, into a show. Because it was, when we got there, it was a mess, you know. It was like, it was, it was a mess of great ideas, but it was a mess. So we had to like, you know, comb through it and sort it out and sort of put it together, you know, like that. But that was a good experience too. And we got to meet a lot of, that was, I think, where, I think that was Tom Kenny's first voiceover job. We hired him. He sent us a, a, a reel of his stand up comedy from San Francisco. And we just thought he was great. So we just put through him in the show. And then I worked with him for years after that. Sweet. And um, not only were you, you, you were part of Fox Kids for two amazing shows, Toonsylvania and uh eat the cab but you also were if i'm wrong here you were also a writer for tasmania right yeah that was my very first uh professional writing job before that i was at disney working on the roger rabbit shorts and Ooh. i learned i learned a lot about story and writing there and um i really wanted to i noticed that the writers in animation were really in control of the projects and they weren't artists so when I left Disney, I went to Warner Brothers to write. They wanted me to direct, but I wanted to write. And that's what led to the birth of Eat the Cat. And, and Savage Steve also taught me a lot about writing, too. So it was learning how to write that led to the creation of all the subsequent shows. But yes, Tasmania was my very first, like, didn't pay it as a writer. That was before we, we didn't even have word processors then. I had an electric typewriter with paper. <laughs> now, uh, for Tasmania, did you do like any like characters on the show? Like, even if there were minor characters? 
how I may have done a little voice work. I don't really remember, but I didn't do anything major. If it, yeah, I think we all probably jumped in here and there when there was like you know crowds or something like that. But the the voice work really didn't start until E. I see, and th this may uh, make you smile, uh, Mr. Cobb. But when I was younger, like I had like when I was in kindergarten, I had a folder for a school and it was a Fox kid folder and all the characters like that were on Fox kids and including eat the cat and uh, eat the cat was on there and uh, other characters like Power Rangers were on there. Like it was all Fox kids oh, in it. Yeah. it was cool. You probably had the, well, you had the power, maybe Louie or I can't Life remember. Louis? Yeah. Life oh, with Louie, Bobby's world. Do you still have that thing? Oh, I gotta see if I have it. But I also had, I got it from, I don't know if it was from McDonald's or Burger King, but I had an Eek the Cat toy. He had a sign up yeah. and he was, it was like, when you move the hands and the sign goes up and it says Eek on it, I believe. Yeah, there were a lot of toys that we did with Burger King with Eek. There was a little shark dog that you could fill with water and shoot him out. And like you could squirt him out of his doghouse or something. There was an Annabelle that would, that was like a roly poly, you know, because she uh, was plump. Uh, yeah, there were there were a lot. Of, I still have some of those laying around here. I have a lot of Transylvania toys too laying around. Well, I actually have some too. Like uh, like it's in a toy chest, like uh, in well, one of my uh, toy bins from when I was a kid. And it was like uh, the Frankenstein character. Like yeah. he, I had one of those. Like you know, Burger. I don't know if it was Burger King, Donald's, or Wendy's. Which one was it? You know what? I'm gonna say Burger King because I think that they were just like into the game then. You know, so I, I mean, I'm guessing. But a lot of people don't know this that that the voice of that Frank Dr. Frankenstein was David Warner, man. He's like a super famous, you know, movie star actor. He's David like, Warner, wait, the, the he, gentleman that, that played the Lobe on Freakazoid. Uh, did he? I don't know. But I he was think, he was a butler in in Titanic, for God's sake. And he was a, he was the guy that got his head cut off in The Omen. He's a great <laughs> actor. He, he worked with Sam Peckinpah. He's got a huge history. It was it was amazing working with him. Now, you also did, um, you wrote an episode, at least one episode for House of Mouse. What was that like? Ooh, that was, uh, wasn't that the bear? Was it a bear? It was uh, the bear. Humphrey, Humphrey in the House was the episode. Yeah, boy, wow. How did you find out about that? I barely remember that. Oh, uh, like, I, 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 do my, I did some research. <laughs> I do remember writing that. I, I think I wrote that right around the time that I was writing the Tales from the Crypt episode. And it was just sort of a side gig. But I remember uh, there were a lot of gags in it. And I think they, they altered my story quite a bit. <laughs> I think I was a little too wild for them. But I, it was you know, Humphrey the Bear. That's who it was. I can't remember the story, though. It probably had something to do with a beehive and a cabin. I think so. Yeah. But yeah, like um, like another uh, thing that I like absolutely love about Eat the Cat is how you, your delivery is, uh, Bill. Like I love, like you know, like there was like one episode, like I'm trying to remember what it was though, but it was the one where I think they did a parody of like the, those sci-fi B movies, like Attack of the Fifty Foot Woman. Oh my God, that's my favorite episode. Me too. That's, that's Eek versus the Flying Saucers. Yes, Eek versus the Flying Saucers. That was the name of it, and. Like, he goes, like, you know, like, he was trying everything he could to save Annabelle. And then there were, I think at the end of that episode, a woman appeared. And he goes, and he goes, well, you know, thanks for giving the mail, lady. Uh, th enjoy destroying our town. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> well, I remember him rattling off all the, a list of all the great things about planet Earth. And it was this random list. It was like, Stevie Ray Vaughan and chocolate. And, you know, he was just, like, all over the place. Brad Garrett played the alien in that one. I, uh, that was when I just, I met Brad on Stuckers and Me um, on the Disney show hmm. right after. So, no, I met him on Eek, and then we did, that's right. I get it mixed up. It's so long ago. I can't remember the years. You know what's one of my favorites, too, aside from uh, Eek versus the Flying Saucer? I love, because I love Halloween specials. I love Hollow Eek. Oh, yeah. Another oh, good God. one. Yeah. Now, uh, where did but the, you're, not, you're, not, you're not mentioning Mad Jack the Pirate in any of this. Did you? Did you? Do you know that show? Mad Jack, I've heard of it. I just never watched it. But tell me about that show. Oh my God, that was my favorite favorite series. Um, Mad Jack the Pirate. He's like this, you know, kind of. A, well, he's a. Can I swear? Can I say? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. He's, an he's an asshole. He's a self-serving bastard, and uh, <laughs> he lives in this fantasy world. You know what? They're all on YouTube. Just watch him. 
but that was really fun. That was a lot of fun. It was it was fun to have a hero on Saturday morning that was a real bastard. And nothing would ever go right for him. He was a classic villain. He's a lot like Captain Hook, a lot like uh, Black Adder, you know. He's just a, what, a, what about uh, when you when you uh, your thoughts on doing Mighty Magic Sword? Oh my God! I, well, I love Kyle Carosa, of course. In fact, we're um, actually well, we are working together on the the new Crash Bandicoot series. Well, we're trying to get the show up and running, but he's a uh, He's, uh, he's my supervising director on the Crash Bandicoot series that we're pitching now. Um, but Kyle sent me his animation reel when he was like 19 years old when we were at Fox Kids. And uh, he was just really enthusiastic, and now he's a great cartoon director. And uh, he, he brought me in to do the voice of, the, um, of, the, of uh, Manfish the Fishman. Who was very much like a niece. It was like a bullshit French person, you know. <laughs> an awful accent. <laughs> I, I, I do. I'm sorry. A lot, sorry? Of fun. a lot of fun. Yeah. Now I gotta ask you because you voice probably one of the most iconic characters. Um, like you were one. You you voiced them in movies though. So, uh, and that is the Tom and Jerry movie Blast Off to Mars. When you played Tom. Yeah, I just screamed, didn't I? I mean, my in my scripts, I wrote those too, but I never let him talk. I would just scream. It was only. It was only. That's it. That's it, and I got paid for that. Well, what did it, <laughs> it was just like that. How many oh, takes man. was that? Uh, probably one, but that's also what um, I think it was. I think it was. I think it was Bill Hanna, who did Tom in the original cartoons, and that's yeah. all he did too. He would just scream. So I wanted to emulate that. And then, you know, I mean, in my Tom and Jerry's, they, they never spoke, you know, they were like tr traditional, you know. As as an animator, like, you know, as an inspiring animator growing up, though, like, who were some, like, animators that you just were, like, an influence to you? Like, you know, there's names like uh, Texas, Chuck Jones, uh, Bob Clampett. Uh, Bob Clampett. Bob Clampett is probably number one because he was just so psychedelic and surreal. And, and and Tex was there. Everybody says that I think Bob was the more um, surreal animator. Like, I mean, Tex obviously did wild takes and stuff, but Tex was more about weird character personalities. You know, that's what I got out of Tex. Like, the motivations behind you know these little guys. Like that. King Size Canary is just a, a great example of like characters trying to one up each other. Uh, whereas Bob Clampett was more just like book review, which is just like the psychedelic, you know, he's just having fun with an, with character animation. So those are probably my two favorite directors. And then you get into guys that just as illustrators like Ronald Searle, uh, um, uh, Ralph Steadman, Terry Gilliam was a big influence on me, you know. How did you feel about like anim like animators like uh, Ralph Batschke? I was never a big fan. I liked what he was doing. I liked that, you know, as far as the industry went, like how he was pulling people together and doing stuff. And he did a lot of great stuff. But I just, there were always, and I was younger, you know. I, I know a lot of guys that worked with him. I never worked. I was too young. But I, there was just something I, always something off about Ralph to me, you know. Um, I, I appreciated what he did for the industry of animation, but I was never a big, big fan of what he produced. Fair enough. And uh, what about like, um, I have to ask you your time on when you did Dan versus. Oh, well, the great thing about that was I got to uh, really work with my friend, Matt Danner. And he was, he was the supervising director on that. And um, that was a, that was a show that it could have been, um, probably better as a radio show <laughs> i don't know it was it was okay but it, it wasn't it didn't challenge me but but i had a great time working with matt danner oh okay and uh with the eat the cat because i have so many eat the cat cat questions because i love this show so much like i always say you're like you know you're you're not only like you know animated let animated le legend but you're also like a legend to all 90s kids growing up watching you know eat the cat and you know Tunsylvania and Tasmania and 
water cartoons, but did you have a favorite like line that Eek said? In well, the- it has to be. Well, there's there's two. One has to be it never hurts to hell. I mean that's a classic. Maybe. But the other one was when somebody would always point out that Annabelle was fat. Randy? <laughs> and you it, 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 you're like really like he never. We made sure that that came through. Like Eek doesn't see you know that at all. You know. So it was funny, it was like, here's a picture of my girlfriend. And they'd be like, wow, she's really fat. And he's like, really? Like, you just didn't see it. I just always thought that was great. So, that yeah, those are the two. Kumbaya is, you know. Well, the kumbaya. One, the one, kumbaya, yeah. <laughs> and it could, that could be used, like, in terror as well. Like, kumbaya, you know. Or it could be cheerful. Kumbaya, you know. Would you say it's, like, similar to, like, Velma when she says jinkies? Oh, absolutely, yeah. In fact, I think we thought of that too. We're, uh, we need to give him one word, you know, that you can always. And Kumbaya just popped up. We wrote that show so fast. I mean, Savage and I would write a half hour within a week, you know. I mean, we didn't have anything else to do, so, you know, that's probably why. <laughs> but we, the, <clears throat> the speed of writing that show is what partially what made it so funny. Because there was no room for any overthinking, or that's why it never dragged. You know, that show was always like boom, 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 boom. You know. Well, you were that, not that... only. Sorry. No, go ahead. I was saying, well, you, you were not only eat the cat, but you also Pierre. I was Pierre, and Pierre is basically Manfist the Fishman. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, uh, I was one of the dinosaurs. I was, um, oh, I forget his name. I was the, the Triceratops guy in the Thunder Lizard. That was my next question, though. I, I was gonna ask, the guy was like this, you know? Well, that was my next question, too. Like, what was it like, you know, doing, like, you you did eat the cat, but then you had the terrible thunder lizards, too. Like, it's kind of, you know, it's very similar to what David, uh, I mean, I think David, you know, David Feast, who created Cow and Chicken, did something very similar to what you did, where you had, like, he had Cow and Chicken, and then he had, like, as a, another shorty called I Am Weasel, which is, you know, very similar so, I mean, he, he did something similar to yeah. what you did with Eek the Cat. You had Eek the Cat and the Terrible Thunder Lizards. Well, I, I think I think that sort of breaking up the show and, and pushing more into it, that all came because all of us watched Rocky and Bullwinkle as kids. So you had Fractured Fairy Tales, you had Peabody, you had Dudley Do-Right, you know, and then you had the Rocky and Bullwinkle adventure. So that was like, I've always loved that. I've always loved that multiple shows within a show. I mean, Sugar's a Meat was that. It was Sugar's a Meat, Tex Ten Star, Piff Possum. And but, as far as and David Feast is great. I love his drawing style. Always have. But you know, you gotta remember too, like we're all kind of hanging out. I mean, the animation community is really not that big. So we would bump into each other and you know, the sort of the vibe was in the air, you know. Uh, especially in the nineties. It was great, fun. And um, well, another show, that, I mean, that was very, like, you know, what you said, that's an example of that would be Heathcliff. You had Heathcliff and the Cadillac Cats. Yes, right. I know, but that was a little bit earlier, though. Yeah. Um, but it's the same, but you're, you're right. It's the same sort of, you know, bunch of kind of variety thing. I just think it's, uh, it's, more, it's more fun to do stuff like that. Right? You know, the half hours are okay. Like, it depends on the character. Like, Mad Jack deserved his own, you know, solid story. But all the crazy stuff, like with Egan and the Thunderless, is just fun to mix it up. I mean, we would break up the show. That's how the that's how the Squishy Bears came into existence. We wanted to break up the story, you know, and make them real. Like he watched it on TV, but they were actually real, you know. Rocket ship to Jupiter. That's so. Now, Bill, you also had like a bunch of you know uh, guest stars on Eek the Cat. You had Gillian Anderson. You had John Walsh. You had Weird Al Yankovic. You had Mr. T. Mr. T. Out of yeah. all those. Best yeah. stars that you had. Who would you say was probably your favorite? Oh, my. William Shatner. Shatner, okay. William Shatner was my favorite because he hated me the first show we did together, <laughs> and then after that, remember William Shatner? Like, remember when he was not funny, and then something yeah. happened and he turned funny, and then he I, was much much more fun to work with. But the first time that that we worked with him was the Christmas. He was playing Santa, and we were terrified. Sam and I were scared to death to work with him and then this Mercedes pulled up to the recording studio and that was him. And Sam was just like, you go out and meet him. <laughs> he always made me do like the dirty work. And I was petrified. It's William Shatner, it's Captain Kirk. And his door opens to this Mercedes and, and he comes up and he's got a cast on his leg. Cause I, I guess 
he's a big into horses and he broke his ankle riding a horse and he's like struggling out of the car with his crutches and he like finally kind of gets up and and i said i'm bill uh are you okay or would you like me to call dr mccoy and he gave me this sh the shittiest look it went right through my heart and he hated me right away and then i had to work with this guy for another four hours it was really funny but then after that he came back and then he was kind of funny he was funnier something happened with him where he started to make fun of himself and then he was great great to work with but i was so scared and we wanted him to do like william shatner as santa that's what we wanted him for that's how we hired him and he came in and he's like no i'm gonna do it like this and we were too scared to direct him any other way we were so green i mean we were really you know, young i mean i don't know, remember how old i was probably 30 maybe or something like that so we didn't know we didn't know jack shit i feel like this like you know a lot of people like they love your work though they say like you're one of those animators that are like very cool like like you know like they kept, like you uh i always called it the top five like like animators that just come off very cool like they just and their work is awesome like uh the late great the late great steve hillenberg is one of them yeah uh, uh, Craig Bartlett is one of them. Oh, Craig's great. Yeah, that stuff's great. Mac Roy. Yeah, yeah. David Silverman, Wes Archer. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, I was gonna say who was the other one too? I was gonna say. Uh, I think you gotta throw Savage in there too. You know. Of course. Yeah. I don't know. That's really. Thank you very much for that compliment. It's um, you know, I think the best stuff comes from when you're just trying to be trying to be funny, but you're not actually trying to be funny. You know? You're sort of letting it be funny. And I was also very lucky. I think all those guys you mentioned, too, were very lucky. because We had great people around us, you know. So it's a way that you have to sort of get people excited. And it's like you're a band. It's like you're a rock band, you know. It's, you get the musicians together or artists, and then you sort of lead the way. But you can't get there without them. I mean, there's so many ideas and weird things that would happen. The actors, too. I mean, there were things that would happen... You know, we would always do read-throughs with E, or I did this all the way in, on all my shows. I would always do a read-through before, and I would record it, but I wouldn't tell them. <laughs> but that's where all the funny stuff from the actors came in. So you allow, I would always allow my actors to have that, that time where they could fuck around with the script and do their own thing. And um, so much great material came in, the stuff that I never would have written. You know, because Jim Cummings will say something crazy. And you're like, oh, my God, that's great. Or Brad Garrett would make, have everybody on the floor laughing, you know. So those are – recording the things was so much fun. I have a lot of those. Uh, I recorded all – I videotaped all the Mad Jack recording sessions. And there were a lot of great people in, in there, too. Someday I'll dig those out. <laughs> and you also worked with some names like Rob Paulson, right? Like voice actor Rob oh, yeah. Paulson. Oh, Rob yeah, I think Rob's been in about every cartoon I've ever made. Um, I think I started working with him. I stuck it to me, and he was always there. You know, he was in my Tom and Jerry's. He was in Pennsylvania. He was in Mad Jack the Pirate. He's in everything. I like work. You know, you meet these guys, and you sort of form a little group. And you, you, they're so good, all these guys. They have so much range that you really don't need to go looking, you know? Um, I remember on the Tom and Jerry one, the Fast and the Furry. I really, wa I really wanted to play the Hollywood producer guy, the, the gruff sort of guy like this. And then uh, I think it was Andre Romano, or the voice director or the voice uh, casting lady from Warner's, said, "Listen to this guy, and see if you still want to do that voice." And it was, uh, it was John DiMaggio. Oh, and he just, and I didn't know who he. I, nobody knew who he was then. That was like 2004. <laughs> and um, he was so good. I just gave, I just like, I gave him the part. That's when I started backing off the voiceover a little bit because it was too hard to write and direct and then also be in them every time. You know, it was like, and it, these guys were so good too. It was, a, it was a pleasure to sort of let them go. I mean, DiMaggio, come on. You know, <laughs> I love the best vendor on Futurama. Oh, he's great. He, he did some crazy uh, voiceover, uh, some serial killer thing. I forget the name of it. I'm going to screw this all up. But it was really good. I mean, he sounded like Tom Waits. You know, you know. It, I forget the name of it, but it's it's really dark. It's it's on um, Amazon Prime. I forget. John, forgive me. 
<laughs> I, I got to ask too, like when you create the characters, like when you draw the characters, how do they, like as an animator, how do you make the mouths move? Like uh, where, where does it go to make like the movement when they're talking though? Like you design the characters, right? But who, like, how do you make the character's mouth like come to life though? Like what's the process? Oh, well, that's, that's an old trick. You just um, animate the vowel shapes, you know, you just A, E, I, O, you know. So there's really only like, I don't know, what is that, seven or eight shapes altogether? F, E, I, you know. So that's really all you need. Um, and it works. It's like, a it a like a, it's like a magic trick. What was it like, a lot of drawings? Like a lot of like... Uh drawings to do though like to make all like those like for him to say one sentence was it a lot to, to draw well that all depends on you know how elaborate you want to get i mean you, you can you can always add more drawings to make things look more fluid and smooth or you can really punch it up flintstone style where you only need six or seven you know oh, it depends okay. on the kind of animation you, you tailor you know your animation to 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 the budget <laughs> Or you're interested. <laughs> well, uh, if there was any co like any uh, animated company you could have worked for, past or present, that you never worked for, what would it be? God, I think I've worked for everyone at some point. Um, I worked for Disney. I learned a lot at Disney. I had a, I've done a sh ton of work for Warner Brothers. Um, and I've 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 worked period you know off and on for everybody. I, I think the best way to answer that question is to like, what, who's the best group of people that I would like to have, you know? I mean, it was great having Savage. I would like to have Savage, Kyle Carosa, Gary Trousdale. Um, oh God, I mean, you know, if I could pick, I, I wouldn't pick the studio, I would pick the guys, you know, that I, that I would want. Sean Dickinson, he's a great illustrator. He's doing the Cuphead novels right now, and he did our designs on the Crash Bandicoot theme. He's amazing. So I think it's more about who you want to work with rather than what studio. The, the, the guy, it's the guys, it's the team that sort of makes the studio cool, not the other way around, you know. Absolutely, because if, if the people, I mean, if you're cool with the people and vice versa, then you got yourself a working team right there. I'm sorry, I, I couldn't really hear you there. Oh, I, I said that. When you have a, a group of team that you know, like that, that everyone's cool with, and vice versa, then it makes a working team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But would you say, like, like, um, like for the team though, would you have like names like uh, Bob Camp or like Bob Ray? Like they they worked, I believe, on the Ren and Stimpy uh, Bill, show. Bill Ray, Bill Ray, Bill Ray. Pardon me, Bill Ray. Yeah, I never really worked with those guys. Um, I love their stuff. Um, you know, I I don't know. I I came from um feature animation and, and TV was my second stop. So I, 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 I would, uh, I would say Mike Fontanelli was a great guy that I loved. Was, you know, I, and there's always new people coming up and you, you know, we, we can't always look back, you know, there's great people coming up. So I'm always looking for new, you know, new talent. Now, uh, would, uh, you heard of the film, uh, the uh, animation company Filmation, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Would you have, I mean, if you didn't work with them, would you, like, if it was still around, would you have, would that be an, uh, an option for you? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not my cup of tea. God bless them, you know? But no, I mean, they, you know, uh, oh, don't get me started. I don't want to say anything bad, you know? No, I just, no, no, no. I, I don't, it's I don't, not I a favorite of mine. I understand. Plus, and plus, uh, I love your animation style because it's lively. It's, you know, it's like, you know, it's come to life. It's like, I love, eat, that's why I love Eat the Cat because there's color, it's bright, it, you know, it's, um, it's lively. Like, you know, it's not like, you know, a cliche old cartoon. It's actually like, you know what, the energy, you actually feel the energy from Eat the Cat's uh, passion and excitement. Yeah, I think that goes back to what I was saying before about the, the speed that we, we would write those things. I mean, it's very true that whatever you create, the energy that's in your head while you're doing it transmits into the piece. It just does. It's just a weird magical thing that happens. Um, the animation ink wasn't always the greatest, but it was like we say, like the speed and the timing and the pace of the stories were what made it appear that way. For for the best animation, I think for me, out of my batch of stuff, I, I think you'd have to go back to Pith Possum and Tex Tinstar. 
um, and Mad Jack too. Um, it's more fluid. You know, you don't see a lot of that these days. And we're trying to do that with the Crash Bandicoot show that we're trying to get going. You have my support, Bill. Really fluid animation, yeah. You have my support, Bill. Oh, I, I hope so, yeah. We really want to make it. It's a lot of fun, and we've been out pitching, so we're just sort of in that game of, like, pitching, waiting. And, of course, now with the with everything that's happening in the world, things are moving a little more slowly, I guess. I've always wanted to ask you this question, sir, but how long did it take to produce one episode of Eek the Cat? Well, we would write the scripts in, in a week, about a week, and then there was a storyboard phase that probably lasted, you know, like four weeks, a month, and then I was usually like three months to, an, to do the animation, and then there's a post-production phase of this, so they, they would overlap, you know. I would say like maybe four to five months, I'm guessing, but that sounded about right. And then, of course, we're overlapping, you know. Oh, okay. And now, did Fox Kids have a deadline, though, when the animation was due or no? Oh, you bet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what it was, though. But, I mean, we were, that's part of the reason we had to write so fast, you know. We, Ooh, had, to okay. keep, we had to keep fueling the fire. Once you see that production schedule on the wall, you know, you got to. You have to make that swing, you know. Now, there's a show I'm actually shocked that you weren't on, though, because the style is very similar to Eat the Cat, though, and that's uh, Two Stupid Dogs. Oh, that, that was, um, oh, God, help me out. That one. Yeah, no, I didn't work on that, but he, he was right behind us at, um, at we were just finishing Sugar's and Meat, I think, and Two Stupid Dogs came out. I can't remember, uh, yeah, but no, I didn't work on that, if that's what you're asking. Oh, I'm shocked because, like, you know, like, because the styles of Eat, Eat the Cat and Two Stupid Dogs are very similar, though, because, like, the humor is very, is, like, awesome. Like, I love the humor in both shows. Like, Eat the Cat, like, I mean, who else is going to go up to, like, in that episode where, uh, I think it was, like, Eek versus the Flying Saucer, where the woman it opens up his uh, house and she gives him the piece of mail and he goes, okay, enjoy it. Enjoy destroying our lady, 50 poor women. <laughs> right yeah yeah <laughs> oh. uh, like, and like as i said like you know b before we c uh, conclude uh, mr cop this interview and I, I i can't thank you enough for this interview uh because i've been a huge fan of your work since i was four wow now i feel really old <laughs> uh, I, I feel old myself i turned 30 <laughs> oh my goodness old man billy yeah well that's great man i love hearing that it's uh, amazing, you know. It's funny too because a lot of the guys I work with now are like eighteen or twenty years younger than me, and, and, and like I was saying about Kyle, you know, like he sent us his reel, you know. But it doesn't matter what age you are; it's how funny you are. I agree, one hundred percent. Now, uh, because this is an open forum, uh, Bill, uh, Bill, you could say anything you want. The floor is yours, sir. Oh, good. I want to promote my new book called. Little Dead Riding Hood. There you go. You can find it on my website, BillCopAnimation.com. Uh, it's full of wonderful drawings. Uh, there's one. It's a nice little poem. It's about the big bad wolf and how he meets his end. Um, you can also go to my eBay page at Bill Cop Funny 2015. There's a bunch of animation artwork uh, for sale on there. But there's, I only made 100 copies of this book, and there's about, you know, maybe 15 left. So if you want a copy of that book, uh, go to the eBay page. has like three on there, and then my Bill Cup animation. Yeah. And I'm working on new stuff now while we wait for Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, now, because uh, my friends Mark and Brett are huge fans of Eat the Cat, could, could you say something to them in, in Eek's voice? Because uh, they would mark it's out if they did. It's Mark and Brad? Uh, Brett, B-R-E-T-T. -T. Brett, okay. Mark and Brett, listen. There's only one thing you have to remember. It never hurts to help. <laughs> that, thank you so much, sir. Like, oh, yeah. Now, let me just say this. <laughs> Now, before we conclude, Mr. Cop, let me just say thank you for not only the interview, but
But I just want to thank you for those memories you gave me as a child, watching Eat the Cat, watching uh, Yucky Duck in short order, watching, uh, you know, Transylvania, watching, like, all, like, the stuff that you have done. You are not only a Fox Kids legend, but you're also a legend to all 90s kids, you know, to all the kids growing up in the 1990s. Well, let's never grow up, and let's never get fat, either. <laughs> really? I don't know. Well, thank you very much. That's a great, that's always great to hear. And uh, hopefully, you know, I'm not done yet, you know. Nope. You're still kicking ass. Still All kicking right. ass. Man. Well, thank you very much, man. Thanks a lot, Peter. You too. Have a good day, sir. Okay. Bye-bye.